We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Tonight on prime time, as federal eviction protections expire, lawyers in Metro Atlanta say they are busier than ever as renters get hit with backlog bills. An 11 year old boy jumps into action to save his grandmother. He will speak about what he did and how he took over the family's Mercedes Benz and navigated it to absolute amazement of his grandmother. First. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. First tonight, investigators are releasing new details after police say a baby was kidnapped at gunpoint over the weekend. The one-year-old was later found and then reunited with his parents. His accused kidnappers made their first appearance today as Shambly police announced that the couple attempted to kidnap another child over the weekend. Joe Hankey reports on the very latest details from police. At a press conference this afternoon, one-year-old Mateo Montufar Barrera played at the toy police car without a care in the world. 48 hours ago, he was rescued 60-plus miles from his home after being kidnapped. Most of the people that you see in here are parents, so it becomes personal. Shambly Chief of Police Kerry Thomas says when the toddler was reported missing around 12.30 Saturday along Clareview Drive in Shambly, it became the police department's mission to find him. Yeah, we understand that results like this usually does not happen. The young boy in a stroller being pushed by his mother Saturday near their home when according to Shambly police, a man and woman the family does not know approached them. The man pulled a gun and grabbed Mateo. His mother fought back. She took his gun and tried to shoot him with it. She tore his shorts and kept his shoe. She showed us a mother's love in action. Shambly PD, GSP, GBI, FBI, and several other agencies all quickly collaborated. And less than four hours later, the suspect's SUV was tracked to Carrollton, found leaving a home. And in this dash camera video, Shambly police arrested two suspects, Maynard Dario Valera Zuniga and Kristen Nicole Valera Zuniga. Both are now in the DeKalb County Jail and after appearing in court today, are being held without bond. In court, attorneys said the couple is married and raising a six-year-old together. Shambly police today announced the couple not only kidnapped Mateo Saturday, but 15 minutes earlier tried to kidnap a different child nearby at gunpoint. That mother ran away with her child. Police have yet to identify her, but do want to talk with her. So we're asking for people that might have heard a story of a woman carrying a baby in a blanket on her back being chased to call the Shambly Police Department. At this time, Shambly Police are only saying the couple charged with the kidnapping intended to raise the boy. The boy and his family came to today's news conference. They did not speak. The police department says they're asking for privacy as they try to put this bizarre episode behind them and move forward in their lives. 11 Alive obtained a copy of the very latest White House Coronavirus Task Force report, which is suggesting that the state is making gains in fighting the virus, but 
There's still a lot of trouble looming. Among the many recommendations to help out Georgia, a continued focus on testing. The task force suggesting that we need increased surveillance, particularly on college campuses. Another key focus is increasing community-based testing locations that are more accessible. And here's why. Georgia's testing numbers are falling. Those are the bars in orange. The Department right now of Public Health is telling us that because fewer people are requesting tests, the more testing falls, the less likely we are to catch the spread of COVID-19 and quarantine those who are carrying the virus. A key member of Georgia's coronavirus response team now stepping away. Governor Kemp is confirming that GEMA director Homer Bryson is now retiring. According to the state's website, he has led GEMA since 2016. Tomorrow, Governor Kemp plans to name his replacement. Well, we're seeing some rain move into northwest Georgia right now, right in through Floyd County, Chattooga County, in and around Dalton. They're reporting some lightning and some downpours as these storms come marching into town. And we're seeing quite a bit of lightning with those, too. Six strikes in the past 15 minutes as this kind of small line moves in. It also has a history of producing 40-mile-per-hour winds. So things getting a little gusty there tonight in the Dalton area. And then down 75 we go as as well. And then once we get on the south side of town here in Monroe County and moving into Bibb County, we also have some thunderstorms. Those are producing quite a bit of lightning as well. They were producing about 16 strikes in 15 minutes. Now we're at 12. So maybe that's signs of uh, the storm starting to uh, lighten up a little bit, but it still looks like it's capable of producing quite a bit of lightning out there tonight. So for the most part, these storms are very few and far between, but where we're seeing them, uh, these storms are capable of producing quite a bit of rain in a short period of time. So some heavy downpours here. We are in the soup. We are in the warm sector of this system. It is humid. It is tropical. So isolated evening storms yet tonight, even into the late evening hours. We'll have another round on our Tuesday as well, and then we dry it out. And you know what happens when we dry it out this time of year. We are going to be heating up. So coming up, just how high those temperatures could go. A 12-year-old girl recovering after a weekend shooting in a crowded parking lot near the East Point Atlanta line. Officers responded to the Lowe's parking lot following a complaint about a large group of people just loitering, hanging out in the area. When they arrived, they found that girl injured behind the Longhorn. Police are still looking for the gunman. New video showing the moment some man hijacked the MARTA bus last week. Surveillance video from the bus showing the man identified as William Robinson there in the motorcycle helmet using a hammer to strike one of the handrails of the bus. The bus driver, not in the video, pulled over, got off the bus along with the other passengers and let this guy do his thing. His thing later resulted in him being arrested by MARTA police at the North Avenue bus loop. Mr. Robinson is now permanently banned from all MARTA property and faces several charges. There are new charges in a central Georgia cold case nearly four years later. Fort Valley police arrested and charged this 62-year-old man named Leroy Neal Sr. with voluntary manslaughter on the death of John uh, Gene Jenkins. Jenkins was found on November 1st, 2016 in a wooded area in Fort Valley. Fort Valley Police Chief Lawrence Spurgeon said his office still trying to figure out what happened. The investigation is rolling along. More arrests could occur as well. She lost her last election. She holds no political office, but Stacey Abrams is emerging as a very important figure in the race for the U.S. Senate on the Republican side. Video that has newly emerged on social media showing U.S. Senator Kelly Leffler embracing Abrams in 2018 before Senator Leffler entered politics. Here's 11 Alive Doug Richards taking a look at why Ms. Abrams matters. Stacey Abrams lost her race for governor in 2018, and she decided against running for anything at all in 2020. Yet the Democrats' visibility still remains high this year, thanks, at least in part, to two ambitious Republicans. When she ran for governor in 2018, Stacey Abrams made an appearance on the court at a WNBA game with one of the team's owners, now U.S. Senator Kelly Loeffler. Leffler is seen returning an embrace from Abrams and applauding afterward. 
which speaks volumes to fellow Republican Doug Collins. When the when the wording came across then, the Democratic governor of Georgia, you saw how Kelly's face brightened up and she clapped and they hugged. This just shows that that relationship's deeper. Congressman Collins is trying to unseat Senator Leffler in a special election in November. I'm Kelly Leffler. I approve this message. But Collins has been getting some of the same treatment in a TV ad produced by Leffler's campaign. Visually, based on a photo Collins and Abrams took together over a decade ago when both were in the Georgia legislature. That's typical politician Doug Collins. He voted with Stacey Abrams over 300 times. So they hope by attaching their opponent to Stacey Abrams, they can uh, give the impression that uh, their opponent is not sufficiently Republican, that perhaps they're too moderate. Abrams herself is actually a full-throated backer of Democrat Raphael Warnock, who is also running against Leffler and Collins in the special election. There are 18 other candidates in the U.S. Senate special election, in addition to Leffler, Warnock, and Collins. But those three candidates seem to hope that by introducing Stacey Abrams' name into the mix, they will bring to undecided voters more clarity and not less. Foul smell in the air in Forsyth County. This foul odor has been around for more than a week. And as Brittany Klein-Peter explains, nobody can figure out the source of where it's coming from. It has that musty, you know, kind of smell, and I think it just smells like 2020. Since last week, neighbors have flooded social media with posts about a foul smell in the Forsyth County area. The bigger problem, no one can figure out where it's coming from. Officials have inspected sewers, water treatment plants, and any other infrastructure. We've had guys driving the entire city limits and, and can't find, you know, anything. The mayor of Cummings says even Georgia's Environmental Protection Division can't figure it out. We were talking to their air pollution division. They don't know either. But I've had no, nobody be able to tell me scientifically what it is. But there are a few theories. I, I think it's weather related, but, but that's just a guess, you know. So for now, it seems that any solution may be left up to Mother Nature. And officials tell me that there's also been reports of residents smelling the odor as far as in Dawson and Cherokee counties. Coming up, an 11 year old boy shows off his driving skills to help save his grandmother. We talked to her about the moment she saw him coming to rescue her and the Mercedes. Don't forget, we're streaming right now on 11 Alive's YouTube channel. Subscribe, join in on the conversation. Give us, give us your opinion. We read it. Yes, we do. It's in the community section. We have more 11 Alive news in prime time right after the break. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be.
Right now, many people who have been out of work or have had their hours cut since the beginning of the pandemic are facing another challenge, and it is losing their homes. One industry analyst predicting more than 350,000 Georgians could face eviction over the course of the next four months. The CARES Act eviction protection ended last month. There was a 30-day buffer, but that ended last week. Tracy E. McPeer talked with an attorney about steps families can take to try and save their homes. Our phones have been ringing off the hook over the past several months. And Legal Aid Society attorney John Ganey says the calls for help are not slowing down. September's going to be really the worst month yet in this pandemic for evictions because the unemployment expanded benefits are ending and then this moratorium is coming to a close. When an eviction notice is posted on the door, Ganey says the clock starts ticking. You only have seven days to respond. And if you don't respond within that seventh day, on the eighth day, that landlord technically has the authority to remove a person from their home. So responding on time is crucial. To help with the process, Ganey says right away, you should call a legal aid attorney. Are there possible defenses to the eviction? That can include a defense because they violated the CARES Act. That could include a defense because they violated some other just normal uh, procedural requirement. Ganey says all evictions have long-term consequences, like keeping you from finding another home. If they see an eviction was filed against you and a large money judgment, say three or four months of rent, is owed, then they're going to be unlikely to rent to you. Not to mention the effects on the rest of the family. An eviction can cause children to move school districts in the middle of the school year. If it's happening multiple times a year, they're not going to be con getting consistent instruction. Ganey says there is never a good time to be homeless, but right now is one of the worst. For people to be put out of their homes at this time especially, just seems inhumane and really dangerous. The city of Atlanta also had its own moratorium on residential evictions due to COVID-19. That ends today. Well, we're looking at some rain moving into northwest Georgia. At the top of the hour, Rome was reporting in some light rain as well as some thunder. So it's really hard to see it here in this shot. You can see how the skies are rather cloudy. And uh, earlier, they were looking very dark indeed. We've had some impressive rainfall amounts the last 24 hours, that's for sure. After yesterday evening, storms that lingered into the overnight hours. Debbie Buckland said that her rain gauge was the fullest it's been since she's owned it. She bought it a couple of years ago and they had over three inches of rain and she lives on the east side of Lawrenceville. So thank you Debbie Buckland for posting that. She's one of our 11 Alive storm trackers. So we're looking at that line that's moving into northwest Georgia right now. Most of it's weakening as it moves in. There's still a little bit of lightning here holding together in northwest Georgia uh, moving in towards Dalton. We do have a few strikes still there. Uh, three strikes in the past 15 minutes as well as some heavy downpours as this small line works its way from the northwest to the southeast. So that's the direction these are moving in. Same direction here down on the south side. And this storm has really expanded. Uh, this is in, uh, it's in Monroe County, moving into Bibb County. 19 strikes in the past 15 minutes. So that storm looks pretty formidable. Moving off to our southeast right now. So we're going to see some of these isolated storms holding together. Heads up in Bremen. Heads up in uh, Heard County. We have some storms moving in from Alabama that may end up impacting you as well. And we're in that warm sector, that warm frontal sector. So it's humid air, dew points are in the 70s, and we still have a chance to see more storms yet this evening and then into tomorrow as well. So the best chance for severe storms will be on the other side of the Alabama line tonight. That's where you see that green greenish color, uh, the darker green color, that's a marginal risk. That means isolated severe storms are possible. And there's that humid air, that tropical air and very tropical air here over off of the Carolina coast where we have our latest tropical depression. This is TD 15. That is our 15th tropical depression of the season. So we are already uh, more than halfway through the list of names and we haven't even gotten halfway to hurricane season yet. So we'll have more on that coming up in the second half hour of this newscast. So so 89 was our high, 73 our low. We should be around 86 and 69 this time of year. So we were definitely a bit above average for our high temperature and our low temperature this morning. So right now we're feeling pretty good in Carrollton where we've had the rain, 78, 78 as well in Marietta. A little warmer though, 84 in Duluth, 83 in Atlanta, and 82 in the Grange and Edenton. So as we head into the evening hours, for the most part, most of us aren't going to see the rain. But where we see it, 
heavy downpours out there like we just showed you on the radar. Temperatures getting down into the low 70s. And then tomorrow, heating up to around 90 degrees with a 40% chance of showers and storms. That gives us a 6 on our wisometer on that scale of 1 to an 11. With an 11 being a perfect day, a 6 with a 40% chance of showers and storms. That continues into tomorrow afternoon and evening as we head through our Tuesday. So here's what we're thinking in terms of the rain that could be moving in as we head into the overnight hours. There's heaviest downpours here we think will be in northwest Georgia, but some isolated heavy downpours could still hang together as they move from the west to the east across the North Georgia mountains. And then tomorrow, quite a few clouds to start. We'll see some showers popping up after lunchtime and then some heavier downpours, very isolated in nature throughout the evening as well once again. And then by Wednesday, we start to dry it out a little bit. And we only have a few little showers showing up on the radar. So a 40% chance on our Tuesday, temperatures near 90 degrees. We'll be in the low 90s Wednesday and Thursday, and we're drying out. No chance of rain in the forecast officially on Thursday. We've taken it out. And then a 20% chance back on Friday, and chances going up as we head into next weekend. An 11-year-old boy helped save his grandmother's life, and in a way, he will be telling this the rest of his life. When she started having a health problem, PJ grabbed the car keys and drove his grandmother to safety in her Mercedes Benz. Here's Caitlin Ross, who talked to PJ's grandma about her driving guardian angel. 11 year old PJ is determined. His grandma told me he does whatever he sets his mind to without hesitation. So when she suffered a medical emergency last week, she had no doubt PJ would come to her rescue. He's an easy going little fella. He loves to play outside. Angela Brewer Lay and her grandson PJ spend a lot of time together outside. He was with her last week when she was walking about a mile and a half from her house. Always ride either his four wheeler or his go car or either dirt bike up and down the road while I'm trying to get a little exercise in. She says she started feeling shaky, seeing spots in her vision. The telltale signs her blood sugar was getting too low. He noticed my demeanor. That's when. <laughs> He sprung into action. She says PJ took off like a shot while she tried to steady herself in the road. And I was leaning against the stop sign. All of a sudden, I looked to my right and I saw my car, my Mercedes Benz, coming towards me. Wait a minute. Looked in the car, it, it was him, it was PJ. She was out of it, but even during a medical emergency, she could appreciate how cool and collected he was behind the wheel. And this child is only 11 years old and drives like a pro. She had to take a video of his skills after she recovered because she couldn't believe how well he handled the car. He did not go off the curb in the grass of nothing, pulled down in the driveway into the garage. He rushed inside and got her some glucose taps and a package of peanut butter crackers. Then she asked him how he just did that. She says her husband asked him to move cars in the yard before, but never in the street and never by himself. She's just so thankful he was there. He's an extra special, ordinary little boy, and he doesn't ask for nothing in return. Now more than ever, the need for greater diversity among medical workers still critical, still to come the connection between a new study that it makes between doctors and race and a newborn survival rate. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. 
Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. A new study highlighting disparities in health care and the importance of the kind of care that babies receive right after birth. It found that black newborns are more likely to die during their initial stay in the hospital than white newborns. It also shows that black babies have a higher chance for survival if they have a black doctor. Jennifer Bellamy has more on the research. A study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that in the United States, black newborns die at a rate that's three times that of white newborns. But when black doctors care for black newborns, the rate of death was cut in half. The study looked at 1.8 million hospital births in Florida from 1992 to 2015. It found the biggest drop in black newborn deaths came among complex births and at hospitals that deliver more black babies. Researchers say the race of the doctor looking after white babies didn't make much difference in their chances for survival. A USA Today review of the study says it didn't give an exact reason for why this happens, but it did identify some structural issues that may be factors. One theory suggests black women may be less healthy and thus at a greater risk for negative outcomes as a result of the combined effects of racism and socioeconomic disadvantages over the course of their lives. That included limited access to health care and education, factors that also put blacks at a greater risk for contracting COVID-19. Another similar issue is the high rate of maternal mortality for mothers of color. Last year, the CDC said black, American Indian, and Alaska Native women were two to three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes than white women. Researchers say the new findings don't mean only black physicians should care for black patients. But it shows that all doctors need better training on how to treat patients of color, and there is a need for more diversity within the medical field. Our 11 Alive Atticus investigative team did an award-winning series on black maternal mortality. And you can find our series, Mothers Matter, right now on 11alive.com and on our 11 Alive YouTube channel in the Atticus section. People who evacuated ahead of Hurricane Laura are returning to down power lines and roofs ripped off and homes gone from their foundation. Next, the efforts underway to help them recover. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 a lot. The governor of Louisiana is warning that it will take a very long time to recover and rebuild after Hurricane Laura. The Category 4 storm made landfall Thursday near Lake Charles, packing 150 mile per hour winds and the storm surge that reached 15 feet in some areas. The damage estimated at nearly $20 billion. Here's NBC's Dan Shenneman. Days after Hurricane Laura barreled through Louisiana and East Texas, there is utter devastation across the strike zone. The things that are important to your children and that are important to you are just in shambles and there's water everywhere and you think to yourself, how is this reality? A harsh reality setting in as residents brace for a long recovery. But we have no electricity, it's really hard to cook things, so food, water are the main things. Hundreds of thousands are without power, the sweltering heat making matters worse. Across Louisiana, but particularly in the affected communities, the heat index is going to be between 105 and 108. Um, and, and this is going to extend for the next few days. The infrastructure is so damaged it could take months before power is fully restored. Vital water lines are also severely damaged. Right, thank you all very much. Now have a good day. Bless you all. Communities now pulling together with food drives. The National Guard is also providing aid while well, more than 50,000 people have already applied for FEMA assistance. We got mold growing in the house. We lost all our food and everything. Uh, you know, we just need so much help. To cope, some residents say they are taking it one day at a time. I pray a lot and I have hope. Hope for a region battered as it takes its first steps toward recovery. Well, we have some showers and storms moving in right now, coming in out of Alabama. Nothing severe right now, but there have been some warnings when these storms were over uh, northern Alabama. And you can see they're still very active over Birmingham right now. So we'll have to keep a close eye on these storms because some of these storms are holding together here. And you can see some of the downpours over the horizon. I stole this shot from our Atlanta camera that looks up above Truist Park where you could see these downpours and you could see these thunderstorms uh, just in the distance at sunset. I wanted to freeze that because I wasn't sure. Yeah, we can't see it as well now, now that it's getting darker. So yes, pretty impressive seeing those rain shafts at sunset in the distance over the horizon. So we do have some of these storms holding together like these moving into Dalton producing a lot of lightning right now. Uh, 12 strikes in the past 15 minutes and some very heavy rain. Winds have been gusting with this thunderstorm up to around 40 miles per hour. So uh, Dalton, I know you want to uh, just kind of uh, hang tight inside for a while until that storm passes. Also here in Heard County, we're seeing some thunderstorms moving in out of Alabama. So we're seeing quite a few strikes of lightning there. And then as we head over into Monroe County, we still and into Bibb County now, we have some thunderstorms that are holding together as well. Heavy downpours with them and 13 strikes of lightning in the past 15 minutes. So still a fairly active night in some spots. Not everyone will get the rain, but where we see it, the air mass is is saturated, so we'll see some very heavy downpours here. The best threat for anything that could be warned on is going to be probably west of Atlanta, closer to where the 
that marginal risk is in Alabama. So coming up, we'll talk about how things will time out for the rest of the night and what you can expect on your Tuesday. Samantha, thank you. Colleges in the U.S. knew this would be a, a difficult, trying year trying to suppress coronavirus cases. But there have already been some outbreaks and some complaints about schools not sharing enough information. Here's NBC's Blaine Alexander. With most colleges and universities back in session, containing COVID on campus proving to be an uphill climb. At Georgia Tech, cases have more than doubled in the past week with 705 positive tests since March. The school is urging students to get tested weekly at one of five free testing sites on campus. If you see someone who's putting others at risk, please report it. One state over, the University of Alabama is also seeing a spike with more than a thousand cases since in-person classes started less than two weeks ago. Last week, the mayor of Tuscaloosa ordered all bars in the city temporarily closed. The truth is, is that fall in Tuscaloosa is in serious jeopardy. Are students taking it seriously now that the cases are going up? I've definitely seen students um, taking it a lot more seriously. I also think that's because a lot of students are seeing people that they actually know personally um, contract the virus. In a statement, a school official said there is no evidence of virus transmission due to in-person class instruction. But across the country, some schools are temporarily pulling the plug on face-to-face -face classes. Outbreaks at Temple University and SUNY Oneonta prompting both schools to go virtual for two weeks. Now some campuses are turning to technology to keep class in session. At the University of Arizona, students can get a notification of a potential exposure thanks to an app called COVID Watch. And the school is using another less conventional method, analyzing sewage. After testing the wastewater from a dorm, officials were able to determine that someone inside was carrying the virus. We tested uh, all the students and, and, and staff that work there in Likens, and we found two positive cases, which we moved over to isolation. So we think this is going to be a very valuable tool to help us get out in front Personalized tattoos, commemorative gardens, and yellow hearts are a few ways that families have memorialized those who have lost the battle against COVID. One New Jersey girl has found her own way to remember these lives by drawing portraits of missing lo uh, loved ones from across the country. Here's Savannah Levins with the story. I lost my grandpa to COVID-19 in May. My grandpa was everything to me. And then knowing how he passed and not being able to have been there with him, it's definitely something that's taken a toll on all of us. When 15-year-old Hannah Ernst lost her grandfather to COVID, she found comfort in art. He was an artist himself, and so I got a lot of his art, artistic abilities, if you will. She made this portrait of him and shared it with friends and family. She just flipped the iPad around and said, here, mom, look at what I did of grandpa. And I was blown away. Then Hannah decided she wanted to offer free digital portraits to other families who have lost a loved one to the virus. So I went on um, a couple of my COVID um, support groups and asked if anybody would like it. In less than 24 hours, Hannah's project went global. I'm getting messages exponentially greater than I could have ever anticipated. It's definitely bittersweet because a part of me um, understands how important this is to families because it's differentiating a person from the sea of numbers that we've become so used to. But the sad part of it is that there's just so many and the impact that this virus has had on so many lives is just incredibly upsetting. She created a Facebook page, Faces of COVID Victims, to share her portraits and snippets about each person's life. I'm trying to ex like put light to the fact that these are legitimate people and not just numbers that are increasing. She hopes the sea of faces serves as both a memorial and a message. Although these numbers are increasing and the mortality is low, um, I think that people should still have that compassion that we did at the beginning where these are lives, these are legitimate families that are being ruined. And I'm hoping that the faces I draw and memorialize help show people visually the impact that this virus has had on our country. Movie lovers everywhere lost a hero Friday night. Chadwick Boseman died after a four year fight with colon cancer. He was only 43, a battle that he fought privately for four years, even as he portrayed a litany of 
of action heroes, black action heroes, both fictional and real, including several movies that were shot here in Georgia. His death also serving as a tragic reminder that colon cancer rates are rising in young people. Here's NBC's Christian Dahlgren with more. A superhero gone at just 43 years old. Actor Chadwick Boseman died after a four-year fight with colon cancer. News of the death from his family sending shockwaves around the world. Chadwick was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer in 2016 and battled with it these last four years as it progressed to stage four. He died in his home with his wife and family by his side. Bozeman never spoke publicly about his personal battle. He shot some of his most iconic films while undergoing treatment. Fans believe Bozeman hinted at his diagnosis in a 2017 interview when the interviewer said, you've been through the ringer. Oh, you don't even know, he laughs. You have no idea. One day I'll live to tell the story. Life on chemotherapy, as what Chadwick went through when he was diagnosed, it really is a challenge. It takes a special person to be able to work through it. Bozeman was diagnosed at stage three, the cancer already through his colon wall, later progressing to stage four, which means it spread beyond his colon. The toll of the disease apparent in one of his final Instagram videos. It's April 15th. It's Jackie Robinson Day. Colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the U.S., affecting an increasing number of young Americans. The rise of early onset colorectal cancer remains an enigma. We need to raise awareness that people under the age of 50 can get this disease. And though he fought his own battle privately, while filming Black Panther, Bozeman took time to visit children with cancer. There are two, um, two little kids, uh, Ian and Taylor, who um, recently passed uh, from cancer. Throughout our filming, I was communicating with them. And when I found out that they, whew, yeah, it's, it's, it means a lot. A superhero on and off screen who still has the power to save lives. cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. 
continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear, on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit CDC. As protests for equality and against police violence continue across the country, many have turned into political clashes with fringe groups on both sides mobilizing. The very latest example over the weekend in Portland, Oregon, where one person was killed. Here's NBC's Jay Gray with the very latest on that situation. New video shows police and medics rushing in after a deadly weekend shooting in Portland. Across the country, protests literally turning into political battlegrounds with President Trump blaming what he calls radical left mayors and governors for the violence and promising law and order ahead of a Tuesday trip to Kenosha, Wisconsin, despite the mayor there urging him to stay away. An incumbent president who sows chaos rather than providing order. This afternoon, Democratic nominee Joe Biden condemning violence on both sides and blaming the president and his followers for the growing unrest. He may believe mouthing the words law and order makes him strong. But his failure to call on his own supporters to stop acting as an armed militia in this country shows how weak he is. For those most affected by the shootings and chaos, the issue is much bigger and runs much deeper than conservative or liberal politics. We're really just sick and tired of the violence. We're tired of it. Uh, we don't want to see more of it. We want to see change. That's what we want. And if we don't start recognizing what the real issues are, it's going to keep happening, and that's unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. As unfortunately, the anger and violence seems to be growing. Well, we're talking about some more storms coming out of Alabama at this hour, so we'll be watching those throughout the evening hours. I'm meteorologist Samantha Moore, and we're going to continue to watch these as they move into northwest Georgia. They've been moving in to the Dalton area for the past uh, 30 minutes or so with a lot of lightning and some heavy downpours. Still seeing 10 strikes of lightning in the past 15 minutes. These are going to continue working their way towards Gilmer County in the next 30 minutes or so. Also, we had some really strong uh, storms moving in through Randolph and Cleburne counties. Uh, these moved into Heard County and now moving into Coweta with a little bit of lightning, but not as strong as those storms were earlier when they were in Alabama. So they do appear to be weakening as they move east. The heads up in Noonan and in Grantville, you may see some heavy downpours in the next few minutes. Nothing showing up yet here at the courthouse in Coweta County. Things look pretty calm, but we could see that one storm hold together well enough to bring in a little bit of rain. But then again, these are pretty isolated in nature. This is not a widespread line at this point. We have had this storm expand, though, here on the south side, just south of Thomaston, seeing a lot of lightning stretching over towards Monroe County. So this has been a particularly interesting thunderstorm tonight. Still seeing 19 strikes in the past 15 minutes, so quite a bit of electricity associated with that storm. So we're in the warm sector here. It is hot and humid in this sector, so uh, plenty of moisture for which storms to tap into and heavy downpours cannot be ruled out tonight or into tomorrow as well. Now this is our water vapor satellite imagery where you see the orange on the map. That means the air is very moist. So you can see tropical moisture extending across the south and into the Atlantic where we have our newest tropical depression. Air Force reconnaissance flew into this area today. We were anticipating that it would be named a depression and sure enough at 5 o'clock the National Hurricane Center did name it uh, Tropical Depression 15. It looks like it will parallel the coastline. It will strengthen into a tropical storm sometime tomorrow and then work its way out into the open waters of the Atlantic. So right now it looks like this is a fish storm and it will not be impacting the East Coast. So that's good news for 15. We'll say good riddance, hopefully, before you know it. But we do have a couple others that are lined up here that we're going to have to watch. 
This one that's in the uh, moving in through the Caribbean right now, south of Puerto Rico, that one has a 90% chance of developing here, and it's going to be moving over towards the Yucatan as we head through this week. And we have our latest easterly wave coming off the coast of Africa. We're going to have to watch that very carefully as well here. So this one, an 80% chance of uh, being named a tropical depression within the next five days, so and a 70% chance within the next couple of days. So right now that track taking it over towards the Yucatan Peninsula. Okay, we're all the way through to the M storm here, of course. Marco was our last storm on the list. Laura was the last one to make landfall. But we now have Nana, which is going to be next on the list. So we are over halfway through the list, and we are not halfway through the season. The peak of hurricane season is on September 10th, and so we do expect things to be most active this time of year. Of course, it began on June 1st. It ends on November 30th, but we can have a hurricane any time of year. So a few isolated evening showers and storms tonight, another round come to, coming tomorrow evening, and then drier by the middle of the week. So we'll continue to see these move to the east tonight with some heavy downpours and some frequent lightning moving into Blairsville, Gainesville, and Canton yet this evening, and then dying out right after midnight. Tomorrow, a few clouds around, maybe a little morning fog, and then afternoon showers right after lunchtime, turning into storms during the evening hours, some of which could have heavy downpours. Downpours. And by Wednesday, things are going to be a little drier. Just a 20% chance of showers and storms on Wednesday. Thursday, we dry it out and we heat it up. We get all the way up into the low 90s. We could even have some mid 90s in middle Georgia. It's going to be a hot one. And then we see things moisten up and rain chances going up a bit as we head into next weekend. Samantha, thank you. Two adult football teams fire off at least 30 rounds at a popular family park in Gwinnett, leaving one person hurt. It happened Saturday night at the Gary Perkle Park in Sugar Hill. Police say two semi-pro football teams were playing each other. A fight started in the middle of the field. The game then was called off. And a short time later, police say multiple people went and got their guns and opened fire. At least 100 people were there at the time. One person was shot, and they were shot in the leg. They're expected to be okay. State Representative David Clark posted that he and his wife heard the gunshots. He went on to say the behavior is unacceptable. The teams will not be allowed back into the park. Although neither police nor the state representative named the teams, the semi-pro football team, the APDFL advertised the matchup on their Facebook page, saying the Columbus Storm would take on the Georgia Cardinals at Gary Perkle Park on Saturday night. However, we reached out to the league last night. They told us Saturday's game was not an official league game. They say the league hasn't played an official game since March, and they don't have any games scheduled or planned until February of 2021. They also claim that neither team is even in their league. The league later added that the Georgia Cardinals had only applied to be in the league, and they have not been accepted as of yet. We're working to gather more information to figure out what's going on here. We'll keep you updated on 11alive.com. Vandalism in an East Cobb neighborhood. Today, religious leaders send a message of peace, saying there is no room for anti-Semitism in their backyard. Safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers. The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel.
where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your a metro Atlanta Jewish community and the Anti-Defamation League taking a stand after hate symbols were painted outside of an East Cobb neighborhood. Six large swastikas were found painted outside the fence of the neighborhood. Several groups from the interfaith community backed by police and the Cobb County DA's office gathered to support the Jewish community. Rabbi Larry Cernovitz says the hate signs do not represent the spirit of Cobb County and they want to send a message of hope instead of hate. There's more love than hate that that when you when you get together so many people from so many different backgrounds and roles that they play, it says that we're not alone here, that nobody is alone and that when we see the humanity in the other, that's when we create community. That's how we build on love. That's how we make the world a better place. Rabbi Cernovitz says the vandalism still is under investigation. A study looking into the disparities in health care for babies based on race. We will walk you through the numbers ahead on prime time. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's. Well, we are now uh, giving you the very latest on uh, information about protesters and can they lose the right to vote in Tennessee? That is one of the questions that we are taking a look at here in the hour ahead. And we will give you the very latest information on that. And here is the very latest on that story. The Verify team is here to fact check the suspicious things you see online. And with protests and an upcoming election, there's just a lot of misleading information going around. Just take a look at these tweets that claim that people arrested at Black Lives Matter protests will lose their right to vote. So let's verify. Will being arrested at a protest cause you to lose your voting rights? First, our researchers trace the source of those tweets back to articles out of Tennessee with headlines like this. Protesters in Tennessee could now lose their right to vote. Our sources are the official records and information from the Tennessee General Assembly, the governor's office, and the secretary of state. First, we should give you a little back history on what's been going on here. For the past Last two months, protesters have been demonstrating and occupying the plaza out front of the Capitol in Nashville around the clock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move passage of Senate Bill 5 on third and final consideration. In response, the Tennessee legislature passed and Governor Bill Lee signed new legislation revising certain criminal laws surrounding protest-related offenses. It goes into effect on October 1st. Here's the part of the law that people are referencing. The bill increases punishment for illegal camping on state property from a Class A misdemeanor to a Class E felony. And that's punishable by up to six years in jail. And according to the Secretary of State, convicted felons in Tennessee lose their right to vote and have to appeal to the state to have them restored. So we can verify that false. You can't lose your voting rights for being arrested during a protest. But we can verify that a protester would lose their voting rights if they're convicted of a felony in Tennessee after this law goes into effect. Right now on primetime, two Georgia Republicans locked in a battle for one U.S. Senate seat. Why both Kelly Loeffler and Doug Collins are using Democrat Stacey Abrams to attack one another. She fought them tooth and nail that she inspired all of Atlanta and beyond. A mother's fierce love and fast-moving law enforcement brought this baby home, chilling new details of the kidnapping that prompted a weekend Amber Alert. And Georgia families fighting to keep their homes as the pandemic drains their resources. We ask the experts what you should do if you are facing eviction. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. We are learning new information tonight about uh, the case of a one-year-old Chambly boy kidnapped on Saturday. The boy was reunited with his family. A lot of us got that Amber Alert over the weekend. Now, he was reunited after being found Saturday night with the couple in Carrollton. Today, police announced the couple tried kidnapping a second child on Saturday. Joe Henke has the latest tonight in Chambly. It took police around four and a half hours on Saturday to track down and arrest the two suspects in this case, as well as find the one-year-old boy and reunite him back with his family. Now, Chambly police today are saying they want to talk with more potential victims. As they say, the suspects in this case possibly tried kidnapping another child only minutes earlier. One-year-old Mateo Montufar Barrera sat in the lap of a relative today during a press conference. The press conference this afternoon detailed how a rare kidnapping came to an end with the best case scenario playing out. It's absolutely the most rare is a stranger abduction and that's what appears we have here and that's less than 5% of all child abductions. Chambly police report around 12:30 Saturday Mateo's mother was pushing him in a stroller. Two strangers walked up, one of them a man pulled a gun. The mother fought back, ripped the man's shorts, grabbed one of his shoes and tried to shoot him with his own gun. The man and a woman got away with Mateo. Police, though, quickly tracked down the suspect's SUV more than 60 miles away in Carrollton. And in this dash camera video, arrested Maynard Dario Valera Zuniga and Kristen Nicole Valeria Zuniga. All I would say is that, that they intended to raise this baby. Nearby the location Mateo was kidnapped in Chambly, police now report the two suspects first attempted to grab another child. The mother able to get away, but police now want to talk with her. And that other mother and her child, potentially two more victims of a second kidnapping case. So police do want to talk with them to learn more details. As far as Mateo, I'm told he is uninjured, back with his family. They are now asking for privacy as they try to get back to a normal life. 
I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. You see my phone on screen here because I'm talking about 366 people right now on Facebook Live. And we're talking about the areas that are seeing some of these showers right now. And take a look at what we're watching in Atlanta. We're fine, uh, but we have a few showers. These are the ones we told you about tonight at 5 and 6 o'clock that will be coming into West Georgia, but weakening. You know, some of those storms in Alabama earlier were severe, and these are not severe right now. We do have a little thunder and lightning with these in northwest Georgia and also just south and west of the city. In the city right now, we're fine. We're dry, but we'll see a couple of showers that are going to be coming through. These over in the western portions of Coweta County have a little bit of lightning with it. Moderate rain that is just to the west of Noonan and also Moreland. That's approaching 85. And then up in northwest Georgia near Dalton, moving into Murray County, about to push into Fannin and parts of Gilmer County. Moderate showers, a little bit of lightning right there in the western parts of Fannin County. We have more rain, though, back into Alabama and Mississippi. That one in Mississippi is severe, but we also think these near Birmingham and moving right down I-20, that these will also weaken as they're moving toward us as we continue through the rest of the overnight hours. So this is the bigger picture. You can see this in motion here as those storms move through. Take a look at this. This is our Storm Prediction Center outlook for today. Earlier, we were talking about the marginal risk that covered much of Alabama, and it cut off right when we got to the Georgia line. Well, now the Storm Prediction Center has taken that marginal risk away, and we're just going to have general showers moving through, so we're not concerned about any severe storms overnight, just a few of those showers that'll linger through. Now, if you don't get hit by a shower tonight, Chances are that you might get one later tomorrow. We'll talk about our rain chances for tomorrow and when we see a drier pattern moving in. More on that in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Can you believe this? We are just nine weeks away from Election Day. A lot of candidates out there are turning up the heat, turning up the pressure. Former Democratic candidate for governor Stacey Abrams is now part of the U.S. Senate race. Sort of. Two Republicans are using her images as blunt instruments to beat each other up politically. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has more on why this makes some unexpected sense. After losing her race for governor in 2018, Stacey Abrams made the conscious decision not to run for anything at all in 2020. And yet, Abrams' presence is undeniable. Doug Collins, who is running for the U.S. Senate, has passed around video of Abrams with Kelly Leffler. It shows now Senator Leffler with Abrams at a pro basketball game and the Republican Leffler embracing the Democrat Abrams and applauding after she's introduced. It's just the, two, the tale of two Kellys. You got Kelly before and now the Kelly she's trying to pretend to be. We're just simply pointing out that you can't be both. You've got to be one. And the one we see is the one she's trying to cover up. And there's more. Leffler's campaign has been running an ad that lingers on the face of Abrams and widens to a photo of her with Doug Collins, who served with Abrams in the Georgia legislature, while saying Collins voted with Abrams 300 plus times. So I think we really need to ask ourselves uh, why we should fall for this type of attack uh, when um, people were just doing their job. So in that instance, Doug Collins was working as a state legislator and Kelly Leffler was working um, as a co-owner um, of the Atlanta Dream. Abrams didn't ask for any of this. She actually supports Democrat Raphael Warnock in the special election. Warnock, Leffler, and Collins will all appear on a ballot with 18 other candidates in the special election. Voters are likely to be a little confused by the number of names that they will see on that special election ballot. They won't see the name of Abrams, but they will see it in plenty of campaign material. Right now, a lot of people who have been out of work or who had hours cut since the start of the pandemic are facing another challenge, losing their homes. One industry analyst predicts more than 350,000 Georgians could face eviction in the next four months. The CARES Act eviction program, well, that ended last month. There was a 30 day buffer there, but that ended last week. Tracy A. McPeer talked with an attorney about steps families can take to try to save their homes. Our phones have been ringing off the hook over the past several months. And Legal Aid Society attorney John Ganey says the calls for help are not slowing down. September's going to be really the worst month yet in this pandemic for evictions because the unemployment expanded benefits are ending and then this moratorium is coming to a close. When an eviction notice is posted on the door, Ganey says the clock starts ticking. You only have seven days to respond. And if you don't respond within that seventh day, on the eighth day, that landlord technically has the authority to remove a person from their home. So responding on time is crucial. 
To help with the process, Ganey says right away you should call a legal aid attorney. Are there possible defenses to the eviction? That can include a defense because they violated the CARES Act. That could include a defense because they violated some other just normal uh, procedural requirement. Ganey says all evictions have long-term consequences, like keeping you from finding another home. If they see an eviction was filed against you and a large money judgment, say three or four months of rent, is owed, then they're going to be unlikely to rent to you. Not to mention the effects on the rest of the family. An eviction can cause children to move school districts in the middle of the school year. If it's happening multiple times a year, they're not going to be con getting consistent instruction. Ganey says there is never a good time to be homeless, but right now is one of the worst. For people to be put out of their homes at this time especially, just seems inhumane and really dangerous. The city of Atlanta also had its own moratorium on residential evictions due to COVID-19. That ends today. Community organizations all across Georgia are really working to find more ways to help families facing financial hardship. The city of Atlanta has allocated $22 million from its coronavirus relief fund, specifically to provide emergency rental assistance. It's administered by the United Way of Greater Atlanta, Residents who have lost income because of the pandemic, they can apply for help with their past due rent, utilities, and security deposits up to $3,000. We do have more information for you and how to apply. Just head to 11alive.com. We now have an update to a CDC COVID-19 surveillance report posted all across social media over the weekend. So here's what you need to know. Death statistics are really complex. Perfectly healthy people who die of old age in their sleep may have two or three other conditions listed as contributing factors to death. Pulmonary critical care, Dr. Jennifer Barberry puts it into perspective. But these are relatively healthy people, you know, very few comorbidities. So you know, they should not be dying at the age they're dying. They should be living for years and years and years. Um, so they are not chronically ill. You know, they have some well-controlled medical conditions but they're not coming in, you know, total pictures of health, but, you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, those are definitely, that is definitely a theme. So here in Georgia, we know that COVID-19 was listed as the primary cause in about one-fifth of our 5,600 deaths. Nationally, the CDC data shows COVID was the direct cause for about 6% of the deaths, but that virus has cost tens of thousands of more lives since February. What is that stinky smell in the air in Forsyth County? The foul odor has been around for more than a week now. As Brittany Klein Peter explains, no one can trace the source. It has that musty, you know, kind of smell. And I think it just smells like 2020. Since last week, neighbors have flooded social media with posts about a foul smell in the Forsyth County area. The bigger problem, no one can figure out where it's coming from. Officials have inspected sewers, water treatment plants, and any other infrastructure. We've had guys driving the entire city limits and, and can't find, you know, anything. The mayor of Cummings says even Georgia's Environmental Protection Division can't figure it out. We were talking to their air pollution division. They don't know either, but I've had no, nobody be able to tell me scientifically what it is but there are a few theories i, th I think it's weather related but, but that's just a guess you know so for now it seems that any solution may be left up to mother nature and officials tell me that there's also been reports of residents smelling the odor as far as in dawson and cherokee counties an 11 year old boy showing off his driving skills to help save his grandmother. We spoke with her about the moment she saw him driving to, to the rescue in a Mercedes. If you'd like to take us on the go, don't forget we are streaming live right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. So go ahead and hit us up there and drop some comments down. We'd love to hear from you. We've got more 11 Alive news in prime time coming up after the break. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you 
First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. do this, but I'm going to coin this one my favorite story of the day. An 11 year old boy helped save his grandma's life in a way he'll be telling his friends about for years when she started having a health scare. PJ, he grabbed those car keys and drove grandma to safety in her Mercedes Benz. Caitlin Ross talked to PJ's grandma about her driving guardian angel. 11 year old PJ is determined. His grandma told me he does whatever he sets his mind to without hesitation. So when she suffered a medical emergency last week, she had no doubt PJ would come to her rescue. He's an easygoing little fella. He loves to play outside. Angela Brewer Lay and her grandson PJ spend a lot of time together outside. He was with her last week when she was walking about a mile and a half from her house. Always ride either his four wheeler or his go kart or either dirt bike up and down the road while I'm trying to get a little exercise in. She says she started feeling shaky, seeing spots in her vision. The telltale signs her blood sugar was getting too low. He noticed my demeanor. That's when I guess he sprung into action. She says PJ took off like a shot while she tried to steady herself in the road. And I was leaning against the stop sign. All of a sudden, I looked to my right and I saw my car, my Mercedes Benz, coming towards me. Wait a minute. Looked in the car. It, it was him. It was PJ. She was out of it, but even during a medical emergency, she could appreciate how cool and collected he was behind the wheel. And this child is only 11 years old and drives like a pro. She had to take a video of his skills after she recovered because she couldn't believe how well he handled the car. He did not go off the curb in the grass of nothing, pulled down in the driveway into the garage. He rushed inside and got her some glucose tabs and a package of peanut butter crackers. Then she asked him how he just did that. She says her husband asked him to move cars in the yard before, but never in the street and never by himself. She's just so thankful he was there. He's an extra special, ordinary little boy, and he doesn't ask for nothing in return. PJ might not ask for anything in return, but they wanted to thank him for his bravery. So this past weekend, they took him out for his favorite, crab legs, both as a reward and to celebrate his early birthday. PJ turns 12 on Wednesday. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Tracker, still talking with about 200 people here on Facebook Live. Angela Watkins is asking, hey, how is Cleveland, Georgia looking? Uh, so I'm going to answer that question for you coming up. We also have Shirley Gongawire says, what's happening with the disturbances in the Atlantic? So I'm breaking that down for you right now as well. Pretty active time in the, in the Atlantic Basin. Let me show you what's happening here locally where we have some showers. Uh, nothing here in Atlanta right now, but we've been tracking some of these showers coming in from Alabama, some of them with heavier rain up in northwest Georgia and also south and west of us in the city. We're OK right now. Uh, there are a few lighter showers over on the west side. Some of those will move through in just a little bit, but nothing particularly heavy. These down in Coweta County coming out of uh, Heard County, northern parts of Troop County, moving into northern Meriwether County, just some moderate showers. We did have a couple of flashes of lightning with that uh, west of Noonan and Moreland, but those are starting to calm down somewhat. And then also these up in northwest Georgia, some lightning came through Dalton and Murray County. Now that's moving into far 
far northwest Fannin, also into Gilmer County, a couple of pockets of more moderate rain that's moving through there. The lightning is mainly over into the western parts of Fannin County. And then there's more rain back into Alabama. These are strong here uh, from Birmingham and then down um, I-20 toward Meridian, Mississippi, where we have a lot of lightning with those. We expect these to weaken just like these are weakening coming into West Georgia. So that's kind of what we're watching with this system that's moving toward the West, but they will be weakening during the overnight hours. Let me show you what we're watching. Uh, take a live look out there right now. This is our uh, Storm Prediction Center outlook showing where we uh, earlier were showing the green color, which indicates some marginal risk over Alabama, and it stops pretty much or it stopped pretty much right at West Georgia. Now the Storm Prediction Center has taken that out for Alabama. Alabama and as those showers move our way, yeah, maybe a few raindrops here, a rumble of thunder possible, but we don't expect anything severe here tonight uh, through the overnight hours. Temperatures today made it up to 89 for a high. Right now, still kind of warm. We're 81 in town. Marietta 78. You cold cooled off earlier because some showers came through there. Athens, though, is at 79. Tomorrow, it's going to be another really warm day. 90 degrees for a high. We're going to go with a six on the wasometer. It's going to start off dry, but then in the afternoon, we'll see some of those scattered showers that'll be moving through. Here you can see those showers coming in from Alabama as they're falling apart. Dry overnight in the morning, a few clouds lunchtime, a mix of sun and clouds. I think more clouds than sun and then in the afternoon, not everybody getting hit at the same time, but scattered showers are going to start developing. A few of those linger into the evening hours before they start falling apart. Then we see some drier weather moving in for the middle of the week. Wednesday, a mix of sun and clouds. We're only going to go with about a 20% chance for a shower on Wednesday and even lower rain chances on Thursday, a less than 20% chance for a shower. Here's the latest on tropical depression number 15. Good news about this one. It is moving away from the coast. We expect it to become a tropical storm. Most likely later on tonight, it would get the name Nana. There's another system we're watching coming off the coast of Africa that has a really low chance of developing. Um, and then another one in the Caribbean, this one right here that has a higher chance of developing. We'll break that down a little bit more for you in just a little bit. So take a look at your seven day outlook. We are going to see uh, 90 degrees for a high temperature on Tuesday and just a 40% chance for a couple of showers. And then as we go into Wednesday, that's when those rain chances come down a little bit more where we have a 20% chance for a shower Wednesday. And then we're going with a less than 20% chance for a shower on Thursday. So looking pretty good um, on Thursday with dry weather. But of course it is going to be warm and then back to a 20% chance on Friday and then heading into the long holiday weekend. Rain chances back up to about 30 to 40%, but temperatures coming down not only into the 80s Sunday and Monday because of a rain chance, but we're seeing uh, some cooler air moving in for next week, staying a little bit below average. From a homeless veteran to his dream job helping other people, retired Army Sergeant Willis Hatfield Rivas begins his new position as a nursing assistant at the same VA hospital that helped him out. He suffered a traumatic brain injury in Afghanistan, then battled and overcame drug addiction. Willis became the first graduate of the Cobb County Veterans Accountability Court in 2017. But since he'd been dishonorably discharged from the military, he was not able to get veterans benefits or a job at the VA. Then it was discovered a 2016 law called the Fairness for Veterans Act. It requires military discharge review boards to consider PTSD and traumatic brain injuries. The review took some time. When the days would get hard, I was like, okay, this is just a process. And, and um, God to go down this route for a reason. Sergeant Willis says the military restored his dignity when they granted him an honorable discharge. Now he starts his nursing job helping other veterans heal. Up next, remembering Chadwick Boseman. We talked through some of his biggest movies that were filmed right here in Georgia and how they changed the game for so many young people. With you, continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a movie lovers everywhere lost a hero Friday night. Chadwick Boseman died after a four year battle with colon cancer. It was a battle that he fought privately for four years, even as he delivered us action packed movies. We're talking Black Panther, two more Avengers movies and the list just goes on. He portrayed some of America's biggest real life heroes too, from Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall to James Brown and baseball legend Jackie Robinson. Today on Alive at Five, we sat down with AC and producer Ryan Dennis to talk about Bozeman's lasting legacy in film and culture. Bozeman's role as King T'Challa in Black Panther became one of the most iconic Im images for young black people in America. You can see that just with how many tributes we saw from young boys in social media. Ryan, this movie was so significant for people across the United States and beyond, but really for Marvel Studios and for Georgia where the movie was, was filmed. Cheryl, we saw a really unprecedented numbers of what moviegoers were willing to do to see this film for the first time. We saw people going to the theaters in full African traditional garb. And it was it, it was really a moment. And it turns out the movie was filmed throughout parts of Atlanta, including Pinewood Studios and shots of downtown Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And it actually grossed more than $1.29 billion at the box office within its first year, becoming one of the highest grossing films of all time. So it turned out to be success all over again when Bozeman reprised his role in Black Panther and Avengers Endgame, when the film became an even higher profile role for him, the movie boasted more than $2.9 billion at the box office, becoming the highest grossing film in box office history. And it all happened right here in Atlanta. So much success in the box office and, and the impact was so far beyond. My youngest learned his alphabet with this Marvel book and B is for, for Black Panther. Uh, he loves the character and everything the character stands for. It just is such an impact on so many kids and so many messages of love came pouring in on social media after the announcement that he had passed. Pearl wrote, we have your legacy to hold on to. Thank you for caring. The most high blessed us, the most high blessed us with you. Wakanda forever. Alicia wrote, wow, we never know what struggles people are going through. That is so true. Be kind. It costs nothing for us to just love one another. May he rest in the peace he made with his life. And Leslie adds, finally, a fighter and hero through and through. While he silently suffered, he embraced and became a character that will and has inspired millions 
upon millions. And that was really the message of the mm -hmm. overall arching theme of the weekend that people are fighting these silent battles. And there was a moment on social media when he reemerged yeah. and he looked very different in his appearance. He was much thinner and a lot of people made speculations or made jokes and he had to go back Ryan and take some of those pictures yeah. down because people were, you know, talking so much about it. And I think it has really taught us a lesson, yeah. a huge lesson in kindness for sure, mm -hmm. because you just never, ever know. Yeah, it definitely takes uh, right. makes everyone look at social media differently. I think that, you know, we, when we look at death and celebrity deaths, we look at their impact. But before, you know, a lot of people go into it just being very judgmental. And one of the memories that comes to mind with Chadwick Boseman and the Black Panther phenomenon was back in 2018 when the Ron Clark Academy, they modeled their entire cla classroom and lesson plan off of Wakanda. You know, it was a social studies class, and they ended up talking about colonization. And then the students were actually surprised when they found out they were going to actually be the first to see the film. So, you know, impact of Chadwick Boseman will live on for decades to come. Great, great point, mm -hmm. Ryan. A lot of I'll us never remember forget the that. kids dancing in the cafeteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cheryl, yeah. that's yeah. what I was going to say. A lot of kids uh, were really, really excited. It became memes nationally known all over the place when the kids were dancing up to that reaction. And you can watch more right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. We really touched on an important aspect, too. We talked with 11 Alive's medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy, about the symptoms of colon cancer and how to maintain your colon health. That's up on YouTube now. People who evacuated ahead of Hurricane Laura are returning home to down power lines and roofs ripped off their homes. It's a mess. Next, the efforts underway to help them recover. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
The governor of Louisiana is warning it's going to take a long time to recover and rebuild after Hurricane Laura. The Category 4 storm made landfall Thursday near Lake Charles, packing 150 mile per hour winds and a storm surge that reached 15 feet in some areas. The damage is estimated at nearly $20 billion. Dan Shineman reports. Days after Hurricane Laura barreled through Louisiana and East Texas, there is utter devastation across the strike zone. The things that are important to your children and that are important to you are just in shambles and there's water everywhere and you think to yourself, how is this reality? A harsh reality setting in as residents brace for a long recovery. But we have no electricity, it's really hard to cook things, so food, water are the main things. Hundreds of thousands are without power. The sweltering heat making matters worse. Across Louisiana, but particularly in the affected communities, the heat index is going to be between 105 and 108, um, and, and this is going to extend for the next few days. The infrastructure is so damaged it could take months before power is fully restored. Vital water lines are also severely damaged. Right, thank you all very much. Now have a good day. Bless you all. Communities now pulling together with food drives. The National Guard is also providing aid, while more than 50,000 people have already applied for FEMA assistance. We got mold growing in the house. We lost all our food and everything. Uh, you know, we just need so much help. To cope, some residents say they are taking it one day at a time. I pray a lot and I have hope. Hope for a region battered as it takes its first steps toward recovery. And this is the active time of year. You know, the peak of hurricane season is on September 10th. And here we are at the almost the beginning of September right now. And things are pretty active. In fact, we have a new tropical depression that is off the coast of the Carolinas. This formed at five o'clock this afternoon. It's going to continue moving up toward the north and to the east. We do expect it to become a tropical storm later tonight. We could see that upgraded at the 11 o'clock advisory. If not, it'll be upgraded, we think, overnight and toward tomorrow morning. And th the next name on the list is Nana. So this one will be formed Nana. It would be named Nana. The good news about this storm, though, is that it's moving away from the coast. It's not going to have a direct landfall here. Don't don't even think it would hit Bermuda. We could see some rough surf here along the uh, Carolina coastline, the mid-Atlantic coast, and as it pulls away, I think that'll take that rough surf away as well. There are a couple of other systems that we're watching. Uh, one of these is coming off the coast of Africa. It's still over land, but once it gets over water, we think it'll have about a 30% chance of development over the next five days. It still has a long way to go across the Atlantic, so even beyond five days, it could still develop out here in the central Atlantic. There's another one right here in the Caribbean, and this one is getting a little better organized. It has a 70 to 80% chance of development over the next five days. You know, in looking at these, though, the models are showing them this one kind of moving toward Mexico and maybe even going over into the Pacific. It doesn't show it turning into the Gulf of Mexico, so that would be a good thing to kind of stay away from us. And the other one out by Africa is just so far away, it's too early to tell if it would have any type of impact on us. So stay with us. We'll keep tracking these systems for you, and uh, we're going to take a look at radar. We still have a couple of showers out there right now. Some producers a little thunder and lightning. We'll let you know when those will diminish in just a few minutes. Breaking right now, we are following a major traffic concern along I-20 at Boulevard Bridge. A part of the interstate is shut down out there right now. Police say you do need to avoid this area, which is impacting both the east and westbound lanes. Officers say there is a situation involving a man on the bridge. We are working to learn more about exactly what's happening out there. No word yet on when the interstate could reopen. Download the 11 Alive app for the latest updates there. Well, there is a new study. Maybe you've seen it. A lot of people have been talking about this one. It highlights more disparities in health care and the importance of the kind of care babies receive right after birth. It found black newborns are more likely to die during their initial stay in the hospital than white newborns. But it also shows black babies have a higher chance for survival if they have a black doctor. Jennifer Bellamy has more on the research. A study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that in the United States, black newborns die at a rate that's three times that of white newborns. But when black doctors care for black newborns, their rate of death was cut in half. The study looked at 1.8 million hospital births in Florida from 1992 to 2015. It found the biggest drop in black newborn deaths came among complex births and at hospitals that deliver more black babies. Researchers say the race of the doctor looking after white babies didn't make much difference in their chances for survival. 
A USA Today review of the study says it didn't give an exact reason for why this happens, but it did identify some structural issues that may be factors. One theory suggests black women may be less healthy and thus at a greater risk for negative outcomes as a result of the combined effects of racism and socioeconomic disadvantages over the course of their lives. That included limited access to health care and education, factors that also put blacks at a greater risk for contracting COVID-19. Another similar issue is the high rate of maternal mortality for mothers of color. Last year, the CDC said black, American Indian and Alaska Native women were two to three times more likely to die from pregnancy related causes than white women. So when you hear that word systemic, we've heard that word a lot lately. Studies like that prove what systemic really means. Researchers say the new findings don't mean only black physicians should care for black patients. It shows all doctors need better training on how to treat patients of color, and there is a need for more diversity within the medical field. Our 11 Alive Atticus investigative team did an award-winning series on black maternal mortality. You'll find our series Mothers Matters right now on 11alive.com and on our 11 Alive YouTube channel in the Atticus section. The FDA says it is willing to fast track a COVID-19 vaccine to make it available as soon as possible. The agency's commissioner says he is willing to issue an emergency use authorization for a vaccine before phase three of the trials are done, but only if the benefits outweigh the risks. The action would make the vaccine available to certain groups before the vaccine is officially approved. So far, two COVID-19 vaccines are in phase three trials in the United States. Well, colleges in the U.S. knew that it would be a tough year trying to keep coronavirus cases down on campus, but there are some outbreaks out there right now and complaints about schools not sharing enough information. NBC's Blaine Alexander has more. With most colleges and universities back in session, containing COVID on campus proving to be an uphill climb. At Georgia Tech, cases have more than doubled in the past week with 705 positive tests since March. The school is urging students to get tested weekly at one of five free testing sites on campus. If you see someone who's putting others at risk, please report it. One state over, the University of Alabama is also seeing a spike with more than 1,000 cases since in-person classes started less than two weeks ago. Last week, the mayor of Tuscaloosa ordered all bars in the city temporarily closed. The truth is, is that fall in Tuscaloosa is in serious jeopardy. Are students taking it seriously now that the cases are going up? I've definitely seen students um, taking it a lot more seriously. I also think that's because a lot of students are seeing people that they actually know personally um, contract the virus. In a statement, a school official said there is no evidence of virus transmission due to in-person class instruction. But across the country, some schools are temporarily pulling the plug on face-to-face -face classes. Outbreaks at Temple University and SUNY Oneonta prompting both schools to go virtual for two weeks. Now some campuses are turning to technology to keep class in session. At the University of Arizona, students can get a notification of a potential exposure thanks to an app called COVID Watch. And the school is using another, less conventional method, analyzing sewage. After testing the wastewater from a dorm, officials were able to determine that someone inside was carrying the virus. We tested uh, all the students and, and, and staff that work there in Likens, and we found two positive cases, which we moved over to isolation. So we think this is going to be a very valuable tool to help us get out in front Mail-in ballots received up to three days after Election Day will be counted this November. That's the ruling a federal judge handed down today. According to Georgia law, absentee ballots must be received by the close of polls on Election Day. But this year, with a record number of mail-in ballots expected because of the coronavirus, U.S. District Judge Eleanor Ross extended that deadline. This November, absentee ballots will be counted so long as they are postmarked by Election Day and received within three business days after that. Again, it means voters turn them in by the deadline. Still, the Secretary of State's office says it plans to appeal. Well, the special and general elections are just 64 days away. November 3rd is coming quickly, as you know. That means you have just a little more than a month to register to vote if you have not already done so. The deadline to request a mail-in ballot is Friday, October 30th, and if you want to vote absentee, the state created an online portal to request a ballot. You can 
find it on securevoteGA.com. The Secretary of State says it takes less than a minute to fill out. If it takes 20 to 30 seconds to sign up, they're going to say, well, that was really quick and it was painless. And that's really the whole thing is, is to make it easy to do and so that voters can really access that. If they want to vote, vote absentee, this is a great way of doing it. Our 11 Alive political team is working throughout this uh, big election year to bring you updates and analysis of the candidates and issues most impacting your life and your family's life. Uh, have a topic you want us to look into, folks? Well, email us at where ATL speaks at 11alive.com. Vandalism in an East Cobb neighborhood, but today religious leaders send a message of peace saying there is no room for hate in their backyard. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. A Metro Atlanta Jewish community and the Anti-Defamation League taking a stand after hate symbols are painted outside an East Cobb neighborhood. Six large swastikas were found painted alongside a fence. This is right outside the neighborhood. Several groups from the interfaith community backed by the police and the Cobb County DA's office gathered to support the Jewish community. Rabbi Larry Sternovitz says the hate signs do not represent the spirit of Cobb County and they want to send a message of hope instead of hate. There's more love than hate, that, that when, you, when you get together so many people from so many different backgrounds and roles that they play, it says that we're not alone here, that nobody is alone, and that when we see the humanity in the other, that's when we create community. That's how we build on love. That's how we make the world a better place. Rabbi Sernovitz says the vandalism is still under investigation.
And we've been tracking a few of these showers coming in from Alabama. The trend, though, as they move in from Alabama into Georgia is that they are weakening and that process is continuing here where we see just a few light showers over North Georgia. Uh, they were a little bit stronger in Northwest Georgia with some thunder and lightning, but as they move into Fannin County and also Gilmer County, they're falling apart. Also, these south and west of the city in parts of Coweta County have also started falling apart, too. In Atlanta, we're fine. A few raindrops here in Cobb County. Those are weakening as they move over into parts of Fulton County. And then there's one right here uh, coming out of Cleburne County, Alabama, right at the Randolph County line, moving into Carroll County. You got a little moderate rain with that, but no lightning and nothing strong with it. You can see these in uh, Coweta County that were stronger earlier with thunder and lightning that are falling apart, but still just some light showers coming in along 85. And then there's what we're talking about in northwest Georgia. That thunder and lightning also diminishing as we have just a few light showers in Gilmer, also in parts of Fannin County. And then that trend is going to continue with these showers that you see back into Birmingham and down I-20. As this system moves closer to West Georgia, these will also weaken. So you've got a good uh, little bit of thunder and lightning with those in Birmingham. But as they move into uh, into uh, Georgia, we don't think that lightning is going to be with them anymore. Take a look at what we're watching out there right now, where we have a live look down in Coweta County. This is in Noonan, and we just showed that little bit of green on radar. I'm not really seeing any rain coming down right now. Can't tell if these roads from this live picture, maybe just a little bit damp from just a couple of those light showers that are trying to move in over Coweta County right now. It got warm today. We topped off at 89, just shy of 90, uh, but still three degrees above the average. We should be around 86 for this time of year. Our low this morning was a mild 73. Okay, look at the rain surplus. Now, we only picked up one one hundredth of an inch of rain, but if you'll remember last week, we were talking about a rain surplus just under a foot above where we should be in rainfall. Well, the rain that came in over the weekend, especially on Sunday, was really heavy uh, over Hartsfield, and now our surplus is 14 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. So take a look at your weather headlines. We're still going to be dealing with some scattered afternoon and evening storms during the day tomorrow, but then some drier weather moves in for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with rain chances at about 20% on Wednesday, less than 20% on Thursday, then back to 20% again on Friday. So uh, some drier air will be moving in. But with that, temperatures will be back to the 90s. Today we were just one degree away from that. I do think we'll be in the lower 90s tomorrow and then even maybe up to around 92, 93 for the middle and end of the week. There you see that 90 degree high, a six on the wisometer with a few scattered showers that'll be popping up in the afternoon and evening. Take a look at the forecast track. You see that activity coming in from Alabama falling apart. In the morning, we're dry. We'll have a few clouds around though. And same thing at noontime, a mixture of sunshine and clouds. And then in the afternoon, not a widespread coverage, but some of those scattered showers pop up. Some of them could have some moderate to heavy rain. A few of those linger into the evening before they fall apart. Then we get that bit of drier air in here on Wednesday with a mix of sun and clouds Wednesday, only a 20% chance for a shower. That'll be nice. And then on Thursday, even lower rain chances here. So we go from a 40% chance Tuesday to a 20% chance Wednesday, and then less than 20% chance on Thursday, but temperatures will be pretty warm though, up to 93 degrees. Friday, 91 with a 20% chance for a shower. A little better chance for showers on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday going into the long holiday weekend, 30 to 40% chance for rain. Temperatures back to the 80s Sunday and Monday, and I do think we'll hold in the 80s for much of next week, which will be a little bit below where we should be for this time of year for next week. Personalized tattoos, commemorative gardens, and yellow hearts. Those are just a few ways that families have memorialized those who have lost their battle against COVID-19. One New Jersey girl has found her own way to remember these lives. She's drawing portraits of missed loved ones from all across the country. It's a beautiful story. Here it is now from Savannah Levins. I lost my grandpa to COVID-19 in May. My grandpa was everything to me. And then knowing how he passed and not being able to have been there with him, it's definitely something that's taken a toll on all of us. When 15-year-old Hannah Ernst lost her grandfather to COVID, she found comfort in art. He was an artist himself, and so I got a lot of his art, artistic abilities, if you will. She made this portrait of him and shared it with friends and family. She just flipped the iPad around and said, here, mom, look at what I did of grandpa. And I was blown away. Then Hannah decided she wanted to offer free digital portraits to other families who have lost a loved one to the virus. So I went on um, a couple of my COVID um, support groups 
and asked if anybody would like it. In less than 24 hours, Hannah's project went global. I'm getting messages exponentially greater than I could have ever anticipated. It's definitely bittersweet because a part of me um, understands how important this is to families because it's differentiating a person from the sea of numbers that we've become so used to. But the sad part of it is that there's just so many and the impact that this virus has had on so many lives is just incredibly upsetting. She created a Facebook page, Faces of COVID Victims, to share her portraits and snippets about each person's life. I'm trying to ex like put light to the fact that these are legitimate people and not just numbers that are increasing. She hopes the sea of faces serves as both a memorial and a message. Although these numbers are increasing and the mortality is low, um, I think that people should still have that compassion that we did at the beginning where these are lives, these are legitimate families that are being ruined. And I'm hoping that the faces I draw and memorialize help show people visually the impact that this virus has had on our country. Coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus. We're going to see those rain chances back up to about 40% for the afternoon and the evening tomorrow. Highs up to 90 degrees. Lower rain chances for Wednesday at 20%, less than 20% chance Thursday, back to 20% Friday. And then for the weekend, about a 30 to 40% chance for afternoon showers with temperatures that'll be back down into the mid 80s for Sunday and Monday. And then that sets the stage for the rest of next week, where we do think we'll see temperatures a little bit below average next week when the maybe low and mid 80s. All right, stick around. Prime time rolls on in the 10 o'clock hour, and we'll see you over on Up Late on 11 Alive at 11.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Tonight at 10, new guidelines for students and staff at colleges and universities. Our medical expert weighs in on how it could keep campuses safe. And as federal eviction protections expire, lawyers in the metro say they are busier than ever as renters get hit with a backlog of bills. Ooh, it smells terrible. A rancid mystery plaguing the citizens of Forsyth County, what experts believe could be the culprits. First tonight, an update on breaking news we brought you in the last 20 minutes here on primetime. I-20 just reopened after a large police presence shut down parts of the interstate. Traffic was impacted on both the east and westbound lanes of I-20 at the bridge. Officers say there was a situation involving a man on the bridge. Thankfully, we are glad to report no one was hurt out there tonight. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. New COVID recommendations at colleges and universities to keep those students and staff safe. The newly released White House COVID-19 task force report comes as numbers in Georgia, they're falling, Jeff. Still, Governor Kemp has extended COVID-19 safety measures here in Georgia, signing two new executive orders today as the virus is still a threat. 11 Alive Chanu Her is live tonight at Georgia Tech with a breakdown of the White House report. Chanu. Well, guys, this is the first White House report in several weeks that doesn't recommend a statewide mask mandate for Georgia. But these recommendations are coming out as schools like Georgia Tech and UGA are seeing a rise in cases. Among the good news for Georgia's COVID-19 numbers is also a new list of recommendations for universities and colleges. 
with students back on campus, the White House COVID-19 task force is asking schools to ensure both diagnostic and surveillance testing are rapid and comprehensive. University students should have quarantine and care sites on campus or near campus and not be returned home to multi-generational households. Ensure all universities can fully test, isolate and contact trace. These new recommendations come as Georgia Tech has more than doubled in COVID cases in the last week, sitting at 705 cases since March. Georgia Tech reports those numbers daily. If you see someone who's putting others at risk, please report it. This week, UGA reported an estimated 241 positive cases between students and staff. UGA's numbers come out weekly. 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy says the guidelines make practical sense. I think the measures are actually um, very concrete, which I think is helpful, uh, meaning they're very specific, which will be useful to the universities and colleges as they try to navigate this new normal. Dr. Reddy says with very specific recommendations like these, it could help schools implement them easily if they haven't already. We're clearly seeing that some people are not listening to the guidelines so perhaps having them in black and white may give the school more ability to probably enforce them to guide students and i did reach out earlier today to georgia tech and uga to see if they're implementing these or already have them in place we have yet to hear back but we'll have an update as soon as we hear back right here on 11 alive Thank you, Chanu. Well, global cases of COVID-19 have surged past 25 million. India setting a worldwide daily record for new cases. The country reported more than 78,000 cases in a single 24 hour period ending on Sunday. India is now only behind the US and Brazil in terms of total coronavirus cases with three and a half million positive cases. Switching to our weather tonight, we had some scattered showers across the viewing area throughout the day. Chris, what can we expect going into the overnight? Well, we're going to see things calming down. We've been tracking some of these showers and thunderstorms that have been coming out of Alabama, but as they move into Georgia, they have been weakening and that weakening trend is going to continue. You can see a few showers here in North Georgia, a couple on the west side, a few south and west of the city, but again, they're just mainly light showers coming in inside the perimeter. We're fine. We've got a couple of showers here in Cobb County, very light stuff also on the south side. Side. Uh, down in Coweta County, we have some lighter showers. There's a little bit more of a moderate shower and heavy rain coming into western Carroll County, just to the north of Ephesus, between Ranburn and Ephesus right now. But we don't have any lightning with that, and it's not severe. We did have lightning up around Dalton earlier, but as that moved into Murray County and now into Fannin and Gilmer County, it's mainly light rain. That's going to keep moving over to Union and Towns, but it'll be very light, and that weakening process continues. We also have a lot of lightning here from Birmingham down I-20 into to western Alabama. We think that those storms will do the same thing that these did. They'll weaken as they move into West Georgia. So we're not overly concerned about any major issues overnight. Maybe just a few raindrops here and there as these showers fall apart. Take a live look out there right now. This is our tower cam in Blue Ridge and you see I, I've moved the cameras. You can see the streets and the reflection of the red light, yellow lights there and the street lights showing that those roads are a little bit wet from the lighter rain. Stay with us. We'll let you know if we'll see additional showers redeveloping once again tomorrow afternoon. New developments this afternoon that came in the case of a one-year-old Shambly boy who was kidnapped on Saturday. The boy was reunited with his family after being found Saturday night with a couple in Carrollton. Today, police announced the couple tried kidnapping Jeff, a second child, on yes. Saturday. Joe Henke has the latest tonight from Shambly. It took police around four and a half hours on Saturday to track down and arrest the two suspects in this case, as well as find the one year old boy and reunite him back with his family. Now, Shambly police today are saying they want to talk with more potential victims. As they say, the suspects in this case possibly tried kidnapping another child only minutes earlier. One year old Mateo Montufar Barrera sat in the lap of a relative today during a press conference. The press conference this afternoon detailed how a rare kidnapping came to an end with the best case scenario playing out. It's absolutely the most rare is a stranger abduction and that's what appears we have here and that's less than five percent 
of all child abductions. Chambly police report around 12:30 Saturday, Mateo's mother was pushing him in a stroller. Two strangers walked up. One of them, a man, pulled a gun. The mother fought back, ripped the man's shorts, grabbed one of his shoes, and tried to shoot him with his own gun. The man and a woman got away with Mateo. Police, though, quickly tracked down the suspect's SUV more than 60 miles away in Carrollton. And in this dash camera video, arrested Maynard Dario Valera Zuniga and Kristen Nicole Valerio Zuniga. All I would say is that, that they intended to raise this baby. Nearby the location Mateo was kidnapped in Shambly, police now report the two suspects first attempted to grab another child. The mother able to get away, but police now want to talk with her. And that other mother and her child, potentially two more victims of a second kidnapping case. So police do want to talk with them to learn more details. As far as Mateo, I'm told he is uninjured, back with his family. They are now asking for privacy as they try to get back to a normal life. A 12 year old girl is recovering tonight after a weekend shooting in a crowded parking lot of Lowe's. It happened near the Camp Creek Marketplace near the East Point Atlanta line. Officers responding to the parking lot following a complaint about a big group of people out there hanging out. When they got there, they found the girl injured behind the Longhorn Steakhouse. Police are still looking for the gunman. New video shows the moments a man hijacked a MARTA bus last week. What to make of this? The video showing William Robinson there in the motorcycle helmet using a hammer there. And then the bus driver not seen in the video pulled over, got out along with the other passengers. They didn't want any part of this guy. Robinson climbed into the driver's seat and then took off. He was later arrested by MARTA police at the North Avenue bus loop. He is now permanently banned from all MARTA property and, of course, is looking at several charges that he will have to face. A man now faces charges in a central Georgia cold case. Nearly four years later, this weekend, Fort Valley police arrested and charged 62-year-old Leroy Neal Sr. with voluntary manslaughter in the death of Gene Jenkins. Jenkins was found on November 1st, 2016 in a wooded area in Fort Valley. Fort Valley Police Chief Lawrence Spurgeon said his office is still investigating and more arrests could come. What is that foul, stinky smell going around in Forsyth County? The foul odor has been around now for more than a week. As Brittany Klein Peter explains, they can't find the source. It has that musty, you know, kind of smell, and I think it just smells like 2020. Since last week, neighbors have flooded social media with posts about a foul smell in the Forsyth County area. The bigger problem, no one can figure out where it's coming from. Officials have inspected sewers, water treatment plants, and any other infrastructure. We've had guys driving the entire city limits and, and can't find, you know, anything. The mayor of Cummings says even Georgia's Environmental Protection Division can't figure it out. We were talking to their air pollution division. They don't know either, but I've had no, nobody be able to tell me scientifically what it is. But there are a few theories. I, th I think it's weather related, but, but that's just a guess, you know. So for now, it seems that any solution may be left up to Mother Nature. And officials tell me that there's also been reports of residents smelling the odor as far as in Dawson and Cherokee counties. Eviction protection amid the pandemic ended last week. Now thousands of families here in Georgia are facing homelessness. Next steps families can take to perhaps save their homes. And in the next half hour, vandalism in an East Cobb neighborhood. But today, religious leaders sent a message of peace why they say there is no room for hate in their backyard. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do.
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Live News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes. Right now, many people who have been out of work or have had hours cut since the beginning of the pandemic are facing another big challenge. And this is an awful one, losing their homes. Yeah, Jeff, so one industry analysis predicts more than 350,000 Georgians mm could face eviction in the next four months. The CARES Act eviction protection, so that ended last month, but there was a 30-day buffer, but then another blow that ended last week. Tracy and McPeer talked with an attorney about steps families can take to try to save their homes. Our phones have been ringing off the hook over the past several months. And Legal Aid Society attorney John Ganey says the calls for help are not slowing down. September is going to be really the worst month yet in this pandemic for evictions because the unemployment expanded benefits are ending and then this moratorium is coming to a close. When an eviction notice is posted on the door, Ganey says the clock starts ticking. You only have seven days to respond. And if you don't respond within that seventh day, on the eighth day, that landlord technically has the authority to remove a person from their home. So responding on time is crucial. To help with the process, Ganey says right away, you should call a legal aid attorney. Are there possible defenses to the eviction? That can include a defense because they violated the CARES Act. That could include a defense because they violated some other just normal uh, procedural requirement. Ganey says all evictions have long-term consequences, like keeping you from finding another home. And if they see an eviction was filed against you and a large money judgment, say three or four months of rent, is owed, then they're going to be unlikely to rent to you. Not to mention the effects on the rest of the family. An eviction can cause children to move school districts in the middle of the school year. If it's happening multiple times a year, they're not going to be con getting consistent instruction. Ganey says there is never a good time to be homeless, but right now is one of the worst. For people to be put out of their homes at this time especially, just seems inhumane and really dangerous. The city of Atlanta also had its own moratorium on residential evictions due to COVID-19. That ends today. Community organizations across Georgia working to find more ways to help families facing financial hardship. The city of Atlanta has allocated $22 million from its coronavirus relief fund specifically to provide that emergency rental assistance so many people need. It's administered by the United Way of Greater Atlanta. People who have lost income because of the pandemic, they can apply for help with their past due rent, utilities, and security deposits up to $3,000. We have more information for you and directions to apply on 11alive.com. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb joining us again. How about a drier week ahead? It, it felt a little unusual to uh, be a little bit cooler this morning, too. Yeah, and you know, we're going to see those rain chances that are going to still be with us tomorrow, but then that drier air comes in for the middle and also the end of the week. And, and we can use it because we now have a surplus of now 14 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. So we, we can afford to dry out just a little bit. Take a look at what we're watching right now. We've been tracking some of these showers that have been moving out of Alabama, but as they move into Georgia, they have been weakening. We have just a few light showers scattered around the metro area. Some of these in Cobb, uh, southern parts of Cherry. Cherokee County, also south to Cab here, Rockdale, Henry, Clayton, also into Coweta County, a few light showers, a few more back into Carroll County too. And you can see these were a little heavier in Heard County with some thunder and lightning when it was moving over the line into Coweta. And then that's been weakening and it'll continue to weaken. And then also in North Georgia, we had a lot of thunder and lightning around Dalton. But as it moved into Murray County and then into uh, Fannin and Gilmer, it's been weakening a little bit more. Some of that about to move into Union with just a few of those lighter showers. And then we've got a lot of thunder and lightning with these storms from Birmingham south and west of Birmingham. Those are also going to weaken as they move into areas south and west of us. So just know tonight 
There may be just a couple little showers around, uh, but nothing strong, nothing severe of, of, of what we're expecting there. Take a live look out there right now. This is down in Coweta County. Uh, you're, we're not seeing a lot of rain down there. The roads are just a little bit damp that you can tell. I've kind of tilted the camera down. You can see a little bit of the reflection there of the light on the roads here. Also right over here, just showing that they're damp from some of the light rain that has been moving through Coweta County, but it's not really heavy at all. Temperatures are still on the mild side. We're 81 here in town. Duluth is 81. Athens, you're a little cooler at 78. A lot more 70s here on the north side. Even 70s on the south side too. It's 78 in Peachtree City and also in LaGrange. Tomorrow, going to be another day you know, kind of similar to what we had today where we start off dry, but then we're going to see scattered showers that will develop into the afternoon and evening. And today's high was 89. Tomorrow we hit 90 and uh, we'll have about a 40% chance for some of those scattered showers. You can see what we're watching. That activity coming in from the west falls apart. It'll be dry in the morning, but a few clouds around. And then at lunchtime, that mix of sun and clouds. And then in the afternoon, you see the green showing up. That's indicating some of those scattered showers that'll pop up generally late afternoon and into the evening hours. A couple of those lingering before they fall apart and then the drier air comes in on Wednesday. That's when our rain chance doesn't totally go away, but at least it goes down to 20%. You can see we're dry at lunchtime and then in the afternoon, not a lot of rain around, just a 20% chance for some of those scattered showers. And then on Thursday, the rain chance is going to be even lower with a less than 20% chance for showers. We have a tropical depression. This is based on the 5 p.m. advisory. I'm expecting a new advisory in at any time, and it is possible this depression could be upgraded to a tropical storm with that 11 o'clock update. If not, most likely by tomorrow morning, it'll be a tropical storm. The next name on the list is Nana, but this storm is not going to have a direct landfall on the uh, Atlantic coastline. It's going to move to the north and east and pretty much stay a tropical storm there. There are a couple of other systems we're watching. One of these is off the coast of Africa that has a low risk of development over the next few days at about 30%. And then another one in the Caribbean. This one has a higher chance of developing about a 70 to 80% chance. And then the name after Nana is Omar. So we're moving through that alphabet there. 40% chance for showers Tuesday. And then the rain chance lower Wednesday at 20%, less than 20% Thursday back to 20% Friday. Then for the long holiday weekend, 30 to 40% chance for some afternoon showers with cooler temperatures expected next week back into the 80s. Take a look at your weather wow moment. This is from Mary Beth Etheridge in Stockbridge. Mary Beth is one of our very active 11 Alive storm trackers. Isn't that a nice picture there with the clouds surrounding a little bit of a blue hole there in the sky to allow some sunshine to come through? Uh, Mary Beth said when she took this picture this afternoon, it was 88 degrees. Thank you, Mary Beth, for this pic picture. We love seeing your weather wow moments too. Uh, you can be a part of our 11 Alive community storm trackers by searching 11 Alive storm trackers on Facebook. Asked to become a member, we'll let you into this exclusive local weather community. An 11 year old boy shows off his, yeah, driving skills to help save his grandmother. We talked to her about the moment she saw him driving to the rescue in her Mercedes. Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. 
We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. By far my favorite story of the day, an 11 year old boy helped save his grandma's life in a way he is going to be telling his friends and maybe even his own kids about one day. Grandma started having a health scare. PJ grabbed the car keys and drove grandma to safety in her Mercedes. Caitlin Ross talked to PJ's grandma about her driving guardian angel. 11 year old PJ is determined. His grandma told me he does whatever he sets his mind to without hesitation. So when she suffered a medical emergency last week, she had no doubt PJ would come to her rescue. He's an easygoing little fella. He loves to play outside. Angela Brewer Lay and her grandson PJ spend a lot of time together outside. He was with her last week when she was walking about a mile and a half from her house. Always ride either his four wheeler or his go kart or either dirt bike up and down the road while I'm trying to get a little exercise in. She says she started feeling shaky, seeing spots in her vision. The telltale signs her blood sugar was getting too low. He noticed my demeanor. That's when I guess he sprung into action. She says PJ took off like a shot while she tried to steady herself in the road. And I was leaning against the stop sign. All of a sudden, I looked to my right and I saw my car, my Mercedes Benz, coming towards me. Wait a minute. Looked in the car. It, it was him. It was PJ. She was out of it, but even during a medical emergency, she could appreciate how cool and collected he was behind the wheel. And this child is only 11 years old and drives like a pro. She had to take a video of his skills after she recovered because she couldn't believe how well he handled the car. He did not go off the curb in the grass of nothing, pulled down in the driveway into the garage. He rushed inside and got her some glucose taps and a package of peanut butter crackers. Then she asked him how he just did that. She says her husband asked him to move cars in the yard before, but never in the street and never by himself. She's just so thankful he was there. He's an extra special, ordinary little boy, and he doesn't ask for nothing in return. PJ might not ask for anything in return, but they wanted to thank him for his bravery. So this past weekend, they took him out for his favorite, crab legs, both as a reward and to celebrate his early birthday. PJ turns 12 on Wednesday. I love that story. It's Jeff, great. I do too. I, I was obsessed with driving when I was younger. Uh, now I, I hate it. I don't want to drive long distances. <laughs> but I think it just shows how much he was paying attention, how mature he is. I mean, he saved her life. I love it. Yeah, it's it's great. I love how she tells the story too. Yeah. She's great too. Yeah, Grandma was an awesome person to tell how it all went down. Yeah, she's a good storyteller. Yes. All right, time for me to head <laughs> out to get ready for Up Late Jeff coming up in about 35 minutes on 11 Alive. We'll see you there this Monday night. All right, Aisha, thank you very much. Here's what's coming up on the Big 36 where news is king. People who evacuated ahead of Hurricane Laura are returning to a mess. Down power lines, roofs are gone. Next, the effort to help them recover. Limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Colleges in the U.S. knew this would be a tough year trying to keep coronavirus cases down on campus, but there have already been some outbreaks and complaints about schools not sharing enough information. Here's NBC's Blaine Alexander with more. With most colleges and universities back in session, containing COVID on campus proving to be an uphill climb. At Georgia Tech, cases have more than doubled in the past week with 705 positive tests since March. The school is urging students to get tested weekly at one of five free testing sites on campus. If you see someone who's putting others at risk, please report it. One state over, the University of Alabama is also seeing a spike with more than a thousand cases since in-person classes started less than two weeks ago. Last week, the mayor of Tuscaloosa ordered all bars in the city temporarily closed. The truth is, is that fall in Tuscaloosa is in serious jeopardy. Are students taking it seriously now that the cases are going up? I've definitely seen students um, taking it a lot more seriously. I also think that's because a lot of students are seeing people that they actually know personally um, contract the virus. In a statement, a school official said there is no evidence of virus transmission due to in-person class instruction. But across the country, some schools are temporarily pulling the plug on face-to-face -face classes. Outbreaks at Temple University and SUNY Oneonta prompting both schools to go virtual for two weeks. Now some campuses are turning to technology to keep class in session. At the University of Arizona, students can get a notification of a potential exposure thanks to an app called COVID Watch. And the school is using another less conventional method, analyzing sewage. After testing the wastewater from a dorm, officials were able to determine that someone inside was carrying the virus. We tested uh, all the students and, and, and staff that work there in Likens, and we found two positive cases, which we moved over to isolation. So we think this is gonna be a very valuable tool to help us get out in front Personalized tattoos, commemorative gardens, and yellow hearts are a few ways that families have memorialized those that they have lost in the battle against COVID-19. 
One New Jersey girl has found her own way to remember those lives by drawing portraits of missed loved ones from across the country. Here's Savannah Levins with the story. I lost my grandpa to COVID-19 in May. My grandpa was everything to me. And then knowing how he passed and not being able to have been there with him, it's definitely something that's taken a toll on all of us. When 15-year-old Hannah Ernst lost her grandfather to COVID, she found comfort in art. He was an artist himself, and so I got a lot of his artistic abilities, if you will. She made this portrait of him and shared it with friends and family. She just flipped the iPad around and said, here, Mom, look at what I did a grandpa. And I was blown away. Then Hannah decided she wanted to offer free digital portraits to other families who have lost a loved one to the virus. So I went on um, a couple of my COVID um, support groups and asked if anybody would like it. In less than 24 hours, Hannah's project went global. I'm getting messages exponentially greater than I could have ever anticipated. It's definitely bittersweet because a part of me um, understands how important this is to families because it's differentiating a person from the sea of numbers that we've become so used to. But the sad part of it is that there's just so many and the impact that this virus has had on so many lives is just incredibly upsetting. She created a Facebook page, Faces of COVID Victims, to share her portraits and snippets about each person's life. I'm trying to ex like put light to the fact that these are legitimate people and not just numbers that are increasing. She hopes the sea of faces serves as both a memorial and a message. Although these numbers are increasing and the mortality is low, um, I think that people should still have that compassion that we did at the beginning where these are lives, these are legitimate families that are being ruined. And I'm hoping that the faces I draw and memorialize help show people visually the impact that this virus has had on our country. The FDA says it's willing to fast track a COVID-19 vaccine to make it available as soon as possible. The agency's commissioner says he is willing to issue an emergency use authorization for a vaccine before phase three of the trials are done, but only if the benefits outweigh the risk. The action would make the vaccine available to certain groups before the vaccine is officially approved. So far, two COVID-19 vaccines are in phase three trials in the United States. On to election security now. The director of the National Intelligence will no longer give congressional committees in-person briefings on election interference. Democrats say it flies in the face of its duty to be transparent with the public as far as threats to the election. The DNI office says it wants to make sure that information and security is not misunderstood or politicized. The office also says it's concerned about information being leaked. This all comes after the agency says publicly that Russia was once again trying to help President Trump win re-election by sabotaging the Biden campaign. Delta and American Airlines are joining United. They will eliminate change fees for U.S. flights. For Delta, the new policy is now effective immediately, and that will include all fares except for basic economy. The airline will extend its waiver on change fees for newly purchased flights, which applies to all seats. The change fee for domestic flights is normally about $20. Airlines are trying to lure people back to flying despite the pandemic. Passenger traffic remains down about 70% from one year ago today. A new study highlights more disparities in health care and the importance of the kind of care that babies receive right after birth. It found that black newborns are more likely to die during their initial stay in the hospital than white newborns, but it also shows that black babies have a higher chance for survival if they have a black doctor. Jennifer Bellamy has more on this important research. A study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that in the United States, black newborns die at a rate that's three times that of white newborns. But when black doctors care for black newborns, the rate of death was cut in half. The study looked at 1.8 million hospital births in Florida from 1992 to 2015. It found the biggest drop in black newborn deaths came among complex births and at hospitals that deliver more black babies. Researchers say the race of the doctor looking after white babies didn't make much difference in their chances for survival. 
A USA Today review of the study says it didn't give an exact reason for why this happens, but it did identify some structural issues that may be factors. One theory suggests black women may be less healthy and thus at a greater risk for negative outcomes as a result of the combined effects of racism and socioeconomic disadvantages over the course of their lives. That included limited access to health care and education, factors that also put blacks at a greater risk for contracting COVID-19. Another similar issue is the high rate of maternal mortality for mothers of color. Last year, the CDC said black, American Indian and Alaska Native women were two to three times more likely to die from pregnancy related causes than white women. Our 11 Alive Atticus investigative team did an award winning series on black maternal mortality. You'll find our series Mothers Matter right now on 11alive.com and on our 11 Alive YouTube channel in the Atticus section. A Metro Atlanta Jewish community and the Anti-Defamation League now are are taking a stand against hate symbols that were painted outside of an East Cobb neighborhood. Six large swastikas were painted along the fence outside the neighborhood. Several groups from the interfaith community backed by police and the Cobb County DA's office gathered to support the Jewish community. Rabbi Larry Cernovitz says the hate signs do not represent the spirit of Cobb County and they want to send a message of hope instead of hate. There's more love than hate that that when you when you get together so many people from so many different backgrounds and roles that they play it says that we're not alone here that nobody is alone and that when we see the humanity in the other that's when we create community that's how we build on love that's how we make the world a better place rabbi cernovitz says the vandalism still is under investigation from a homeless veteran to his dream job of helping others retired army sergeant willis hatfield revis begins his new position as a nursing assistant at the VA hospital that helped him. He suffered a traumatic brain injury in Afghanistan, then battled and overcame drug addiction. Willis became the first graduate of the Cobb County Veterans Accountability Court in 2017. But since he had been dishonorably discharged from the military, he was not able to get a veteran's benefit or a job at the VA. Then he discovered a 2016 law called the Fairness for Veterans Act. It requires military discharge review boards to consider PTSD and traumatic brain injuries. The review took time. When the days would get hard, I was like, okay, this is just a process. And, and um, God told me to go down this route for a reason. Now, Sergeant Willis says the military restored his dignity when they granted him an honorable discharge. And now he starts his nursing job helping veterans heal. Protests against police violence nationwide continue, but some also are turning into political clashes and chaos in the streets. The very latest examples coming up next. We're keeping a close eye on a tropical depression here off the Carolina coastline that is expected to become a tropical storm later on tonight and also another potential tropical disturbance down in the Caribbean. We'll let you know if we need to be concerned about either of these systems. The Braves were quiet today as the trade deadline passed, but their bats spoke loudly in Boston. Highlights from a fanless Fenway Park coming up next. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 
televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. As protests for equality and against police violence continue across the country, many have turned into political clashes with fringe groups on both sides mobilizing. The very latest example over the weekend was in Portland, Oregon, where one person was killed. Here's NBC's Jay Gray with the very latest on a troubling situation. New video shows police and medics rushing in after a deadly weekend shooting in Portland. Across the country, protests literally turning into political battlegrounds with President Trump blaming what he calls radical left mayors and governors for the violence and promising law and order ahead of a Tuesday trip to Kenosha, Wisconsin, despite the mayor there urging him to stay away. An incumbent president who sows chaos rather than providing order. This afternoon, Democratic nominee Joe Biden condemning violence on both sides and blaming the president and his followers for the growing unrest. He may believe mouthing the words law and order makes him strong. But his failure to call on his own supporters to stop acting as an armed militia in this country shows how weak he is. For those most affected by the shootings and chaos, the issue is much bigger and runs much deeper than conservative or liberal politics. We're really just sick and tired of the violence. We're tired of it. Uh, we don't want to see more of it. We want to see change. That's what we want. And if we don't start recognizing what the real issues are, it's going to keep happening, and that's unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. As unfortunately, the anger and violence seems to be growing. The governor of Louisiana is warning it will take a very long time to recover and rebuild after Hurricane Laura. It was a Category 4 storm. It made landfall near Lake Charles, 150 mile per hour winds and a big storm surge that reached 15 feet in some areas. The damage now is estimated to be around $20 billion. Here's Dan Sheneman. Days after Hurricane Laura barreled through Louisiana and East Texas, there is utter devastation across the strike zone. The things that are important to your children and that are important to you are just in shambles and there's water everywhere and you think to yourself, how is this reality? A harsh reality setting in as residents brace for a long recovery. But we have no electricity, it's really hard to cook things, so food, water are the main things. Hundreds of thousands are without power. The sweltering heat making matters worse. Across Louisiana, but particularly in the affected communities, the heat index is going to be between 105 and 108. Um, and, and this is going to extend for the next few days. The infrastructure is so damaged it could take months before power is fully restored. Vital water lines are also severely damaged. Right, thank you all very much. Now have a good day. Bless you all. Communities now pulling together with food drives. 
The National Guard is also providing aid, while more than 50,000 people have already applied for FEMA assistance. We got mold growing in the house. We lost all our food and everything. Uh, you know, we just need so much help. To cope, some residents say they are taking it one day at a time. I pray a lot and I have hope. Hope for a region battered as it takes its first steps toward recovery. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We continue to track some of these light showers coming in from Alabama. A lot of these are falling apart as they move our way. We do have a couple of showers. One of these right here just south of I-20 inside the perimeter, not too far off from Hartsfield Jackson, just north of Hartsfield, right around East Point. We've got a little bit of moderate rain coming in. That's about to cross over uh, the downtown connector where 85 and 75 come together here on the south side. That's moving over to the east. Those showers down on the south side in Coweta County are, have fallen apart. These in Carroll County are in the process of falling apart, mainly just some light rain there. And in North Georgia, it was heavier earlier. Those showers moving into parts of Union County, Towns County, and just a few little light sprinkles around in some spots. And that's the trend with these other showers in Alabama that they're going to continue falling apart, especially these here with some thunder and lightning just from Birmingham down to the south and west. That's moving eastward, pushing down to the south and east. Those also will fall apart as they move in. Just know that tonight there is the potential for a couple little isolated showers around. We we just got the latest in on a trop our tropical depression, and it is still a tropical depression. Maximum sustained winds at about 35 miles an hour, and this track still keeps the storm moving away from land, even going down to a tropical depression, we think, early on Thursday, and then a remnant low for the end of the week. So no real major impacts. We don't expect a landfall on the Atlantic coastline, and maybe just some rough surf here along the Carolina coast and the mid-Atlantic region. We're also watching a system out to the west coming off the coast of Africa. It's still over land right now. Once it gets over water, it'll have about a 30% chance of development over the next five days. But as it continues moving across the Atlantic, we'll keep an eye on that to see if it'll develop. This is the next one that has the better potential potential after this tropical depression. Uh, this one could become a tropical system after that, too. It's got a 70 to 80% chance of development. Now, the next name on the list is Nana. We think that would be this one if it becomes a tropical storm tonight. But if that one delays in becoming a tropical storm and this one becomes a tropical storm first, then that'll be Nana, and then the name after that is Omar. So we'll keep watching all of those. In fact, you can see these names here. We've been through a lot of them. Uh, Laura, of course, was the last one to make landfall. Marco also made landfall before Laura did. But these are the next two names, Nana, Omar. And then you see the other ones, Paulette, Renee, Sally, Teddy, Vicky, and Wilfred. If we get through Wilfred and we run out of names on this year's list, then we'll go to the Greek alphabet after that. And we did that back, oh gosh, was it 2005, I think. We also had to, uh, had to go to the... Um, uh, go to the Greek alphabet because we ran out of names. All right, here's a look at your tropical timeline. You know, we have the beginning of hurricane season is on June 1st and it goes through November 30th, but the peak time is September 10th. So we're at that time of year here at the end of August, beginning of September, where we're at the peak time of hurricane season before things start to go down as we go through the rest of September and also into October. And of course, the season ends on November 30th. Take a look at what we see for the rest of the uh, seven day period. We're going to hold on to 40% chance for showers tomorrow afternoon and a high of 90 degrees and then lower rain chances. How about that? 20% chance Wednesday, less than 20% chance Thursday, back to 20% Friday, and then a 30 to 40% chance for showers Saturday, Sunday, and Monday for the holiday weekend. Not a washout, just scattered afternoon showers, cooling back to the 80s for Sunday and Monday. And it looks like we'll be cool, cooler next week too with more of those 80s. All right, sports on this Monday night. No deals for the Braves today as Major League Baseball's trading deadline came and went. Their pickup of pitcher Tommy Milone on Sunday will have to do for now with one month left in the regular season. With the expanded playoffs this year, more teams are in the playoff race, which means fewer teams are willing to sell. I've been through a lot of trade deadlines before. There's some that you're active and you make deals and some that you don't line up and you don't make deals. And obviously... Everybody wants to be able to make deals and uh, improve the team, uh, but you know, we face with the decision, short-term, long-term, all, all those kind of things, and you have to weigh what you think is right. Braves in Boston, here's one guy any GM would be happy to see. To Max Fried on the mound, another solid start. Really nasty stuff tonight. Five innings, five strikeouts, trying to get to 6-0 with a win tonight. The game was tied at two in the fifth. Austin Riley up, bases loaded. He drove it in to right, just missing a grand slam instead. 
it would turn into a three-run triple. Braves right now leading 6-3 as they play in the bottom of the ninth inning. All right, it's definitely weird watching the U.S. Open and not seeing any fans, you know, and, and b baseball's like that too. I guess we have to accept the fact that we have competition. We should be grateful for that, all things considered. But, you know, fans make such a big part of it, don't they? I mean, whether it's tennis or, or golf or it's baseball. But, uh, you know, John uh, Isner tonight playing a marathon match at uh, the U.S. Open. Isner took on fellow American Steve Johnson in the first round. And, of course, it went to five sets. Of course, that fifth set went to a tiebreaker. And in a match that took nearly four hours, which is normal by John's standards, <laughs> it's Johnson winning the tiebreaker 7-3. So Isner's day in New York is short. Johnson wins it in five sets, advances to the second round. There's nothing... I want to do for four hours, quite frankly. <laughs> I have the attention span of an insect. Coco Goff exploded onto the national tennis scene last year. Now a 16-year-old, she returned to the U.S. Open to a first-round match against Anastasia Sevastova. Goff dropped the first set, won the second. Third set, very close, a lot of drama, but this turns out to be Sevastova's day, and she wins the third 6-4. So Goff's 2020 U.S. Open ends in the first round. We're less than two weeks away from the opening Sunday for the NFL season. Hard to believe. Well, hard to believe that uh, tomorrow is September 1st also. The Falcons are going to host the Seahawks. No fans in Mercedes-Benz Stadium for that one. But the game, of course, will still count. Before the team can start simulating Seattle, it still needs a few more days of working against each other. Falcon versus Falcon on the practice field. Four more days of us of staying in this mode of really going hard and at it against one another, just simply to get our conditioning right, our timing right, the accuracy, uh, all of those things. Former Norcross High School star Alvin Kamara is not with the Saints right now during their training camp. ESPN reporting it is an unexcused absence, and it is related to his contract. He is set to make $2.1 million in the final year of his rookie contract. That is sports. We will end it, clean it up, <laughs> right after this break. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. 
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing. Just a few areas of shower activity we're watching moving through quickly overnight. Nothing bad, nothing with any strong storms or anything. But then tomorrow afternoon, scattered showers redevelop. We have some drier air coming in for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with much lower rain chances before the rain chances come back Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to about 30 to 40 percent chance. And cooler air moving in next week, too. We'll talk more about that on Up Late on 11 Alive at 11 o'clock. objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's 